Hi, my name is Jesse Barcelona and I'm going to be covering Lab 7. So Lab 7 may or not be your favorite lab in the entire graduate program. We shall see, right? Okay, so we're going to start off with the normal thing. Make sure you have the computer named appropriately. If so, you can go to section two. Then you want to start Wireshark. That's really important part. Uh, we want to get our sniffer started so we can do network forensics later, especially for the section on the reverse shell. Okay, so I'm going to go to capture options and start the capture on Ethernet 4. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, get connected to your Kali, of course, and then we're going to ping our Windows system. If you want, you can copy and paste your IP from that. Keep in mind your IP is different than my IP. I'm going to type ping. I'm going to do that. Paste. OK, and we're going to ping seven times because it's lab seven. I'll come over here and type ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol, and I will go ahead and make sure that's working, and it is. All right, good. Now we can get to the main section of the lab. All right, so you do want to come over here and verify that you have the root user. The root user should be on your system. That user was from the file and print sharing lab. If not, it directs you to go back and to do those steps over again in steps three and four in lab four, section three. Okay. All right. Now, just to verify that everything's good with root, you can always do this. to set a user's password or change it just like that from the command line. All right, now this next part is important to do. Um, it can work without doing this, but it may cause some problems uh, once we start dumping the hashes and stuff. So um, in, your, in your virus protection, you wanna turn this off, cloud protection and real-time protection. Okay, so, and then you should see that uh, red real-time protection is off. And you wanna come back over here and you wanna close the screen. All right, so now we're gonna go over to our Linux system and we're gonna type the command to start Metasploit. So I've been using this tool for a long time. Metasploit is a framework for exploitation. So if you're familiar with, uh, OpenVAS or Nessus, those are vulnerability scanners. They don't actually exploit. This, this goes the next step, actually allows you to break into a system. It's a free and open source product. Um, so Rapid7 maintains it. I believe it was started by HD Moore. So you actually can read the credits for every exploit if you want to go in there and look it over. Okay, so I'm gonna get a banner message here and keep in mind that the banner is not important. It's just for fun. You can actually type the word banner to change your banner and you should see one like what I have in the lab. Okay, so here's some type of a banner. Some of them are like matrix, et cetera, et cetera. There's a different one. Okay, now let's get on to the lab. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to search for the PS exec exploit. So type search, then type PS exec. Sorry about that. OK. Now, so the next thing we're going to do is copy this. If you want to type it all out, you can, or you can just type use and paste in that exploit. Then hit enter. Now, if you want to learn more about the information, 
uh, ignore the um, message that says no payload is selected. You can type show options or info, and that will tell you about the exploit. Um, so now what we're going to do for this first exercise in network forensics is set a payload of the Windows shell reverse TCP. Of course, TCP is a connection oriented protocol. It is, stands for transmission control protocol. Underscore TCP. All right. Next, you're going to copy the IP from of Windows machine you are attacking from Mars. I will do that. Go back here, and I will type set our host, which is stands for remote host, and then I will paste the IP. Your IP will be different than my IP. I'm going to set the SMB user. Now, some of these attacks work without specifying these. Um, so that makes them very powerful. And I'm going to set the pass of that fancy password we use, which is capital P at SSW0RD. Now I'm going to type show options. And this is where you want to make sure you've set everything correct. Um, the L host is actually going to be your Linux system. There's the payload. We wanted that SMB user and path set. After that, we're going to cross our fingers and type exploit. Because as my uh, former colleague Dave Warren used to say, you can't call the help desk when your exploit doesn't work. So I'm crossing my fingers, and it's looking good. Meterpreter, hit enter here, or no, we're not at Meterpreter yet. We're at a command shell. Okay, that 444 port, that is actually, I know that very well, that's Metasploit. So now you can type who am I. That will tell you the level of privilege you have achieved. So I don't think I've really talked about this in the classes, but you know, you can't really be the system. The system is a reserved account for like services and stuff. So when you attack a service that is running a system, you become system. And uh, that's not even something you can normally do. Although we are gonna pull a funny trick coming up here, you'll see in a second. So if you actually type net user system, you, it will say that doesn't exist, the account. But then if you try to add the account, these directions of course are in the lab, then it's going to give us an error saying, the account exists, which is interesting because a minute ago it said couldn't be found. A little bit of contradiction here. So now we're going to do something completely sinister. I only reserve for my favorite students here. We're going to type system with a space, much like we did with administrator. I've used this trick against them, and it's gone under the radar quite a few times. So um, there's that. Oh, hold on for one sec. OK, yes, let me type that again. So basically, I had written these labs earlier, and that was the conflict that will not happen for you. There it is. OK, so now you don't want to just have a system account. You want that account to be an administrator. To do that, you're going to type net local group, begin quote, system, space, end quote. Uh, I meant net local group administrators first, then put the name of your account, just as you see in the lab, the space, end quote, and add. And it worked. All right. Now you can actually type net local group administrator to list all your administrators on the system. Something you want to check in on Linux or Windows if you're in defense or in forensics. 
how many of these accounts are present. Okay, so we're actually done with the first part of the hack. That was many of your maybe first experience with Metasploit. That's fun stuff. So now we're going to stop our capture and then we're going to type in the filter pane, frame contains Microsoft Windows. Now click that. And notice not only do we see it, we see that for port 444, which is the Metasploit default. Okay, now I'm gonna follow TCP stream. And what you are looking at right now is the actual actions that happen during the intrusion. So basically the user, um, the attacker looked for their level of privilege, they added a user and they put that user in the administrators group and then they left the session. You can also look at what the hacker typed in blue and the responses from the server or look at it all at once. Okay, click close on that. It looks like the next step, we will stop the capture if that hasn't been done and then you will go up to options and click start on ethernet four. And now we will continue without saving if you get that message. Um, and just like it says in the lab manual, now we're gonna go back to our Metasploit, but we're gonna set a different payload. The payload we're using now is the Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. So it's pronounced Meterpreter slash reverse underscore TCP. All right, all the other options will probably be right. So I'm gonna hit up arrow a couple times just to verify. So this is my IP of my Windows system remote host. This is the username and password being utilized. That's the LHOST, my Linux system. That was automatically set. There's the port 4444. According to this, the next thing we're going to do is type exploit. And now we're going to hope for a meterpreter. So I typed exploit, I crossed my fingers. And there you go, I have meterpreter. Now for you, if you haven't seen it before to see some of the available commands, you can hit the question mark. You can look at all the various commands. There's quite a few up there. You can do things like dump their screen, run a video, execute commands, dump hashes. You see all this stuff, record mic, webcam. So um, dumping hashes, time stomp is actually dealing with forensics. You're changing the dates and times. Uh, to kind of make your malware like blend in with everything. So um, we're going to first type the most important command after you get a interpreter session, and that is get UID. You want to find out your level of privilege, which is system again. That Again, you're not supposed to be using that account. And then you want to do get PID. And uh, your PID will be different than mine, but basically the PID is the process ID then um, we can actually type PS to look at all the PIDs. If you want, you may go ahead and do that. And then if you wanna find the specific PID that we're actually hooked in under, you can just type PS space grep, and then you can type powershell.exe. Now, it's gonna be a lot of forensic investigations because of PowerShell, because it's a very powerful networking administrative tool. Okay, so there's that. Now, if I type PWD, that tells me the directory that I'm in on the Windows system. Okay, so now we're gonna load one of the extensions. To do that, I want you to type load Kiwi. And hopefully mine will load because I've loaded it before. Okay, so now that we have Kiwi loaded, then we can do the LSA underscore Sam dump. There was a hash dump command that I've used before, but it seems like on this more modern version of Windows, you got to do a little bit more work. This says LSA dump underscore Sam, according to my screenshot. So, oh, this is all lowercase. That's an underscore. Okay, let's see if that works. All right, so just to show you the power of that, 
like you see all these hashes that it dumped. Like if you Google this, I mean, I'll, I'll try. If not, I'll go to crack station. I'll see if it, I can Google the hash. But if it cracks it right here, yeah, you may be able to uh, click one of these and it'll tell you basically it's, it's fancy password. You can also go to a website like crackstation.net. Oh. And you can paste it in. And then you have to do the CAPTCHA thing, unfortunately. No, there it goes. OK, so you can get that. Now, for the last part of this, we do want to stop the capture in Wireshark. And we want to show you something very important to know about. TCP dot port space equals equals 4444. So basically, if you do that and you right click and you go to follow TCP stream, and if you're in the Meterpreter session, what you're going to find out is that you'll see this first, but Meterpreter is actually has an encrypted connection between the victim and the client. So if someone's using Meterpreter, they're going to have to do something else. That's why lesson 10 is uh, memory forensics. Okay, so that's the end of this lab, and we will see you for the next lab. Thank you.